Hi, hey everyone. We're gonna, today we're going to be looking at global population and just starting out looking at the, the basic distribution, density, um, and some of the history behind it and now the current growth. So looking at the Earth's population, um, right now there's about 7 billion people on the Earth. Um, that's a number bigger than we can possibly fathom. But if you think about the fact that it's gro also growing by 80 to 90 million people per year, um, it's a pretty staggering thing to even try to wrap your mind around. Um, in the United States alone, we have over 300 million. And obviously, it's difficult to count exactly how many people there are throughout the world. But um, between the various resources we can look at, there are um, pretty accurate figures that give us a general idea of what this looks like. So if you go to, for example, the US Census Bureau, there is a world and US population clock that gives us a, a, a sense of how many people there are. And, and right now, the, the best estimates are that there are over 7 billion people. So looking at that, um, where are they? As we start talking the why of where, um, where are the people located and why? And so when we look at world population distribution, we're looking at the acumeny. Um, basically, where are, there pla where are the places in the world where population is permanent um, and that is in the greatest um, concentrations or densities as well? So if we look at this map, um, you know, questions that hopefully you're asking as we become more spatially thinking students are, uh, what type of thematic map is this? Um, and, and looking at this, you know, if we just on a, a basic idea of a, a choropleth map, um, showing where the population densities are throughout the world. So thinking in terms of acumeny, or where permanent settlements are, where do you think the top five population centers are? Just looking at the map in a broad sense, where are they? Obviously, you'd probably be drawn to the darkest shaded or de de most densely populated areas, one being in East Asia, if we look at the coastal areas of China. Um, in South Asia, and predominantly much of India, is a very dense, po densely populated place. The t and if you take China and India, the, most the two most populated countries in the world. We can look at Western Europe, the East Coast of the United States, and finally Southeast Asia. If we look at these five areas, these are the most um, densely populated areas and most heavily populated areas in, in, in the face of the Earth. And as we look at this more closely, um, you know, we're, we're going to start looking at what are some of the characteristics that they share, um, what are the things that um, emerge as, as population is starting, and we could also start looking at emerging population clusters. We've highlighted these five. What are the other places where you're starting to see dense populations or settlements take place? Um, I'm guessing many of you would look at uh, Western Africa, um, especially along the western coast, or uh, in sub-Saharan Africa, um, perhaps looking at South America and along some of the coastal areas um, as, as two places that you might consider. So let's look at this in another way. Again, what kind of map are you looking at? And what does this, what, how does this change the way the information is presented to you? What, is your, what are your thoughts in terms of what does this map present differently than the last one? Um, besides looking at a cartogram with the, the thematic map you're looking at, um, you know, your eyes are obviously drawn to, the, to China and India um, and showing where there are, in this case, uh, the, the most number of people. So this is now changing um, land area size to population and making and representing these countries accordingly. And so if you look at this, there, if you look around the world, I'm sure there's some countries that you could look at that surprise you in terms of their relative size. By the way, where did Canada go? Or Australia? Um, and some that look, uh, you know, that you wouldn't have expected. Um, looking at, look at Japan, for example, as, a, as an example of, of another one that's a little bit of a surprise. Looking at these um, five clusters more specifically, um, looking at East Asia, we can, we can highlight um, countries like Japan, uh, China, North and South Korea, and pr predominantly we see this, uh, one of the major characteristics is coastline, water access. And this can be n not only for sea access, but most often you're going to see it along freshwater, like river access. So when we look at the Yellow and Yangtze River um, as being two primary water sources that much of China's population lives along, aside from those coastal areas. In South Asia, we consider India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, um, at one time all of which were considered part of India until you had the independence movements uh, middle of the 20th century. But there's over 1.5 billion people that represent this area. And if you look at the growth rate, 
um, at 1.4 to 2.2%, that's actually pretty high. Um, and so we'll look at that more specifically later in this chapter, but it's significant because it's a growing population. Uh, and, we, and we can see those natural borders. If you look at the density, we can start seeing physical features like the Himalayas um, dictate or impact the population distribution and settlements. Um, and you can see a very distinct um, cutoff where those Himalayan mountains are. So just looking at population density, we can actually um, identify physical boundaries uh, based on that. Another example is Europe, uh, the third of those uh, populated re community regions, um, about 728 million people. Um, these, these numbers are constantly increasing, so we could probably find that it's even higher today. Um, but again, we look at where these dense populations occur. Um, and yes, there's populations along the coastal areas and along rivers, but interestingly, we can also look at where other resources are, like the coal fields. Um, and along ur and in urban areas, and, it, and, a, and a spatial question is why is that? And if we want to look at this, and we'll look at it with more depth later, um, this is a product of the Industrial Revolution, um, which had a profound impact not only on human population but economic development in global history. Southeast Asia, um, this is also growing. We have the, the fourth largest country in the world in Indonesia. Uh, and throughout the, the island areas of the Southeast Asia, you see some very dense populations, but some and also fast growing. So um, you know, countries like Vietnam, Philippines, um, Indonesia, all places where you're having significant population per square mile or high densities, and, and those concentrations are very high. Along the East Coast, it's not surprising to look at the New York area, but uh, you know, if you contend, we have a, what would be considered a megalopolis, where um, there, the populations have become so dense and distributed along the East Coast that they actually are almost connected. So if you could argue that looking at you know, between Boston, New York, Philadelphia, Baltimore, Washington, um, between the, the network of transportation and the extension of populations that um, there is no real distinct boundaries, um, we actually call this, this a megalopolis. And again, we'll look at these are some of these topics we'll come back to later. Um, very urbanized, and this goes back to the early settlement patterns of the early Europeans. Um, and it's, in terms of concentration, it's the greatest of the Western Hemisphere. Um, today we're seeing slower growth, um, but we're seeing larger growth as we move westward in, westward in the United States. Here's another different view of the, just the U.S. population density, so you can see some of those urban areas and how that looks. Um, this is the 2000 um, census, but we could probably update that here um, and see similar patterns, but probably see some other emerging places as well. Here's another representation, another um, uh, uh, more of a three-dimensional almost, well, two-dimensional, but a, a 3D and uh, perspective. Um, I don't know what those um, the dots represent. Um, I think they're, uh, I don't recall offhand, but I like this because it shows the actual, um, it gives you a, a, a comparative view of the densities and, and you can really see where New York, how much bigger New York is or how much more densely populated it is relative to other places in the country. Um, and so you can very easily identify the three biggest cities in the United States. If you take a second just to look around and, and even then compare it to the Twin Cities uh, to give a relative perspective. When we look at population in general, the generalizations we can make that, yes, they're going to focus near areas where there's ac water access. Um, there's also, we can look at temperate zones. We've got climate types, uh, not in extreme heat and not in extreme colds. And so when we look at those the latitude ranges, the bands of latitude across north, north and south of the equator where we see temperate climates, um, you're likely to see more greater populations. Um, and as we move into the 21st century, a, an increasing number of people live in, in urban areas. Um, that 50% of the people live in, in cities, and uh, uh, or, or we live in cities, and 50% of the people live on only 5% of the land throughout the earth. Um, so we really have incredible concentrations of, of populations clustered in, in particular areas where we find conditions that are favorable for human settlement. So. Uh, this is not only this is not a new factor. So when you look at permanent settlement of Ecumeni, um, this goes back to ancient civilizations. That early on you see river civilizations where where settlements um, initially populated. And here you look at East Asia, 
um, and still centered around these old s patterns of civilization. The same thing you can be found in India along the Ganges. Um, and if we look at um, the United States, um, we can look at the patterns, in this case, from east to west. The European settlement, and as they moved west, um, you see that distribution changing. Well, the influence of people, when we start talking about the cultural landscape and the interactions between the environment and, um, and human population, it can be uh, pretty dramatic, especially when you look at it through satellite imagery at night. Um, you can see the lights throughout the Earth, and it, it becomes very reflective, again, of the patterns that you can see we've talked about in terms of population patterns. Um, and then you see some unique things, like what's going on across Siberia in, the, in East Asia, um, where all of a sudden there's population centers very inland. What's going on there? Look, look at North and South Korea, the distinct differences you see there. Um, what's happening along India if we look again, the northeast edge? Um, and other questions you could ask. What does it mean for economic development, um, energy use, resource use? What is happening in those places where it's really bright? And where is it ha what's happening in those places where it is dark? So things to be considering as we look at some of these, these areas of population um, right now.